Hey, what's up everybody? Retro Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, I'm psyched to dive in and test out the Kinhank Mini MP100 Mini PC plug and play game console. So what's interesting about this is it's very well branded here. You can see Kinhank Mini across the top. We can see Mini PC MP100 right here on the box. However, the Amazon listing looks very different than this and makes no mention of Kinhank at all. Um, but it does very clearly mention that there are over 60,000 games plug and play ready to go on this mini PC game console. So I have no idea what games are on here, or what collections, but I do have some information on the specs of this. So I'm gonna pull this up. I'll show you guys on screen as well, but here's just a little bit of the information here. So this uses the Intel Alder Lake N100 processor, which I am familiar with. This is going to also have eight gigabyte DDR5 RAM on here. So not the uh, you know beefiest when it comes down to the RAM, but we have, all the information outlined for us right here, up to 3.4 gigahertz, four cores, four threads. So the specs on here, definitely not the highest end when we're looking at mini PCs with you know gaming performance in mind, but we should still be able to get pretty good performance out of this compared to a lot of the other plug and play game consoles out there. So we're going to unbox this, take a look at the layout and design of this, and then of course, fire it up and see what's waiting for us on the inside. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, let's open this up. All right, so here is our mini PC right here. I'm gonna actually just set that aside for the time being. All right, so we have a provided controller here, and this is actually a GameSir T3 wireless game controller. So I am familiar with GameSir. Generally, they have pretty good products. Um, so this one right here is going to be a 2.4G um, option. So this is going to connect over through a USB dongle. And we'll open that up momentarily. But let's open this up right here, which should have all of our cable connections in it. So now even though this is technically a plug and play game console, this is essentially just a mini PC that has been uh, pre-configured for us. So we have HDMI cable, we have our mount for this, so we can easily mount this inside of a arcade cabinet, uh, alongside a desk, backside of a monitor, whatever we wanna do, mounting screws here as well. Here we have our power supply cable. And um, here of course is our mini PC, or in this case, game console. So let's open this up. I think a lot of people would probably just look at this and assume that this is just a game console, but at the end of the day, this is just a mini PC, as I've said before, uh, and we're gonna comb through this in depth. Now, first thing that I notice here is obviously, clear as day, Kinhank Mini across the top here, even though, again, the listing does not mention Kinhank at all. If we take a closer look at the mini PC here, you can see over here we have our audio um, connection, so we can go ahead and plug in our headphones or an external speaker if we wanted to go that route. Next to that, we have a USB 3 port, followed by three regular USB ports, power button over here, good action on the power button, ventilation on both sides here. And in fact, I just noticed that we have a micro SD card slot right there too, so we can get some additional storage going on here. There's nothing currently inserted into that. Um, now on the back side, we have HDMI port right here, display port right here. So two different options to bring this up to you know your display, whether it's a monitor or a TV. Over here we have two ethernet ports and then our power supply port right there. So we'll take our power supply cable, it connects just like that. So this actually looks like a very nice mini PC. So we obviously have to see what's going on internally and we are going to open this up because I'm not sure what we're going to actually find within here. And you can see that there's actually one, two, three, four different screws built into that little rubber pad on each of the corners there. There's two holes right here that's actually to mount this to the uh, provided mount. So we're going to open this up because I'm not sure what to expect inside. So the listing here actually says that this is a eight gigabyte DDR5 uh, with 256 gigabyte plus 500 gigabyte external HDD, um, which is, I mean, there's nothing external here. Everything would be installed internally. Um, so maybe there's a 256 gigabyte plus 500 gigabyte uh, installed within. I mean, we got to open this up and see what's going on. So I'm going to take these four screws out and we're going to take a peek inside. Okay, 
Yeah. Sequin. All right, so you can see how that flops right open just like that. So you can see within here, we actually have a 256 gigabyte M2 SSD installed down here. Um, and then we also have a 500 gigabyte 2.5 inch HDD up here installed um, on the backside of the lid. So um, it does line up perfectly with what has been described in the um, you know description or the title and description rather of this Amazon listing. Um, it said external, but it means external as in it has been connected over here. Um, it's actually internally connected, but um, you know they could have been a little bit more straightforward. But I mean, I know what they mean by external. They mean that it's not mounted like the M2 is here. So um, you know, pretty good there. But you can see not a lot going on here within. It's not like your uh, typical high end mini PC. Um, so. You know, we're definitely interested to see what we're going to have for uh, performance here. It's nothing too high end going on internally, but still is going to be much more uh, capable than your typical like TV box plug and play setup that we typically see all over the place. So definitely um, excited to test this out. We're going to fire it up and see what's going on. All right, guys, so here we are loaded up into Retrobat and you can see we are actually in the carbon theme, which is the most basic theme. There's two other ones you can choose from here. All three though, in all honesty, are very basic. You can add your own if you want to. You just have to make sure that you are connected to the internet. So you can see right here on the all games list, if we drop down a little bit, we have 64,891 total games on here. Um, and uh, we'll jump in here just to get a feel for what the layout is like. So here you can see everything is listed in alphabetical order and it does seem to be truly uh, in alphabetical order. That, that has been a concern in a lot of these plug and play setups in the past where things were just kind of thrown in at random. So good to see. Now, it doesn't look like we have any video previews. Everything is just a screenshot, it seems. We do get a little description there as well, but just pretty uh, no thrills in all honesty. Text list on the left, right side, got the screenshot in the description. Uh, but that's about it. So this is the layout in all games list. Again, alphabetical order. So I'm going to back out. We have our favorites collection here, which is blank. That's always good. You can add your favorite titles in here for easy access. Continuing on, we have Retrobat. This is going to be your settings. So if we go in here, we can go in and we can ac access each of the um, emulators in here individually. So always good to have access to that. So over here, we're kicking off our collections. So we have 32 games in here. You can see how everything is listed. And again, alphabetical order. Oh, we do have some video previews. Um, it looked like everything prior was just screenshots, but maybe some, let's see if everything, yeah, everything in this collection, it appears anyways. I'm gonna drop down, let's check out Lemmings. Everything here does have video previews working, which is great. All right, so this collection, again, 32 titles, Commodore Amiga 500, 1,876 titles in here. And we have video previews here. No, this one looks like just the box art. So that lines up with what we saw in the all games list. So we're going to be on the lookout for duplicates. Now, not all duplicates, like some duplicates can be like a part one, part two, um, or, you know, multi-disc game. So not everything is going to be a straight up duplicate. Uh, I'm honestly not that familiar with Commodore Amiga 500, so I can't say if some of these, like here we have A Train in here twice, uh, A10 Tank Killer in here twice. I don't know if this is like a part one, part two sort of situation here. I know Amiga does have a lot of those, so I'm going to give it a pass here. But, um, you know, with the stuff that I am more familiar with, we're definitely going to be on the lookout for potential duplicates just to make sure it's not littered with tons of them because I've reviewed other stuff from Ken Hank in the past and that has been a, um, an issue. So Amstrad CPC, 1,154 games in here. And we have just screenshots for this. It looks like just screenshots over here as well. But you get a feel for the layout and how everything navigates within each collection. Over here we have Amstrad GX uh, 4000, 22 titles in here. So just screenshots over here as well. So lots of European titles here. I mean, everything is going to be European for this one. Moving on, we have arcades. So 
2,451 arcade games here. So this might be uh, a lot of duplicates. We have to really see because that seems like a really hyped up number there in all honesty, uh, especially if this is you know essentially MAME. It definitely seems like it would be more than what we would typically have in here. Um, let's see. Love AB Cop. And all of these are gonna be screenshots as well. So, so far I'm not seeing tons of duplicates or anything that looks concerning. Alien 3 The Gun is a great title. And I like that it tells you like additional information in parentheses there. So it'll tell you like the version of the game. Um, it'll tell you whether it's a Japanese release, world release, um, European. Sometimes it tells you who made the game. Um, so, I mean, it does give you some additional information. It's not necessarily always in line with everything else. Like some of these say US, some of these are telling you what version of the ROM it is and stuff like that. So, you know, the, the information given to you for each title does vary a little bit, but still um, good information there in the end. So right here, like Captain Commando, for example, um, we have multiple versions. We have this bootleg, this bootleg, Japanese, so on, um, world one. So, I mean, there are duplicates, but are they the same duplicate? No, not really. I mean, they, they do s slightly differ at least. So, you know, I'm not gonna get bent out of shape about that. If it was just like the same title over and over again, it was literally the same ROM. That's when I get concerned that they're just trying to, you know, kind of pad the numbers a little bit. So um, if we hit select, we can go down here to the jump to, and I actually want to look up, um, let's go down to W and let's see if they have WrestleFest, which is one of my favorite arcade games here. So um, I probably would have been better off going to the next letter, but here we go right there. So we have, WrestleMania here, we have WrestleFest right there, we have WWF Superstars, and we don't have duplicates for these. I think the last Ken Hank um, drive actually had like, I think like seven or eight different WrestleFests on it. So we don't have um, tons of duplicates here, which is good. Now let's go in here and let me look for one more title. I wanna kinda test this out a little bit here and see what they've got going on. What do we have for Gauntlet? So let's go up to G. I love that franchise. And it should be right up here at the top for the most part. So we have uh, Gauntlet, two-player, Gauntlet, um, that's the Rev 14. We have two different versions of two. So yes, there's duplicates, but they are different duplicates. So I mean, you know, or different versions of the same game. So I'm all right with that. All right, so let's back out. Pretty, pretty decent there, pretty clean. Uh, Atari 2600, 1,931 games. Now I'm not gonna go through all of this, like, okay. We've got a lot of the two-pack specials here, which for um, emulation, I'm not crazy about, in all honesty. Um, all right, so here, wow. Look at Adventure. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 different versions now. Again, are they exactly the same? Not necessarily, but is anybody gonna play 14 versions of Adventure, probably not, even though it is, you know, relatively, uh, you know, popular one. Uh, Alien, one, two, three, four. Okay, so there's definitely duplicates here. I personally don't need all these versions, um, but at the same time, I will clarify that I don't need any of these because I'm not going to be playing Atari 2600 games personally. Um, so we'll keep it moving here. 68 games over here for Atari 5200 and. Talk about a difference, almost 2,000 over here and then just 68 for 5,200. So I imagine this is going to be pretty, um, yeah, pretty clean. There's no duplicates in here at all that I'm seeing. So we'll back out, keep moving to 7,800, 62 titles over here as well. Um, Ace of Aces, good game, Asteroids. Again, very much like the previous collection where it is you know, very nicely put together. So Thomas Wave, 12 games for Thomas Wave, and I am not seeing any duplicates here, which is good because a Thomas Wave can be a collection that if you're just dropping in like sets or you're going online and just grabbing 
um, you know, an easy download of this collection. You will have duplicates. So definitely gives me an indication that they put some time into this. So for Cave, you see everything that this offers us. Moving over, ColecoVision, we have 169 games. So there are some multiple versions of games here. And yes, I suppose that would make them duplicates like this one here, Donkey Kong. Two versions of Donkey Kong. You know, it's not outrageous so far with the duplicates, but it's too early to really, you know, tell what everything's going to be like on here. So Commodore 64, uh, 3,703 games, but yes, there's uh, different parts to games. There's, see, this is what I was saying before, disc one, disc two. So at first glance, maybe you would consider, and if they didn't have the parentheses, you would say, oh man, they got duplicates right here, but there's disc one and disc two. Other than that though, like here, side A, side B for A Nightmare um, on Elm Street, that's not a duplicate. So yeah, pretty, pretty well put together. This one here, you can see obviously there's different discs and sides. So we'll back out of Commodore 64. So that's the reason that it's not truly that many games. It's just that there's different parts and different, um, you know, components to each of the titles there. So slightly deceiving in that it says 3,703 actual games when, you know, the true number of actual games is a fraction of that. But, you know, it is what it is. That's why you always have to take the, the, um, the count for these sort of drives with a grain of salt. So. Capcom System 1, 48 games in here. And I do see we have a Chinese uh, bootleg of this one. Um, yeah, there's definitely definitely um, some duplicates here and different versions and all that. So Capcom System 2 over here, 40 games. And these definitely are slightly over in the count of what they should be. So that is an indication that there are, you know, again, multiple versions. And we can see that as we home through these. Capcom System 3, how many were in here for Capcom System 3? Five, okay. So pretty clean there. All right, Dreamcast, 35 Dreamcast games. And this is one of my favorite retro consoles. So naturally it's gonna be one of my favorite collections to dive into for emulation. So we do have a duplicate right here for Marvel vs. Capcom uh, Clash of Superheroes. Let's see. This is a two-part game, so not a big deal there. Uh, it's definitely got some good games. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Virtual Tennis, um, Virtual Fighter, um, Street Fighter, of course, Soul Calibur, of course, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Resident Evil, Code Veronica is good, Power Stone 1 and 2 is good, Mortal Kombat, you can't go wrong with, Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2 is good, Legacy of Kane. Um, yeah, I mean, the Crazy Taxis, Dead or Alive, definitely some great titles here. I mean, I could give them some recommendations for more because I am such a massive fan of Dreamcast, but this is a great collection here and great selection. So we'll keep it moving. We have over here, Family Computer, 1,422 games. You're gonna find different versions of titles here as well. And um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're kind of all over the place here. Um, all right. Keeping it moving, FB Neo. Wow, 6,457 games for FB Neo. So, yeah, we're in duplicate land here for sure. Um, and yes, there are different releases and all that. Um, not everywhere, but you know, I can give them the excuse here and there that that's the case. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on here. Wow. Like even two on two open ice challenge love this game but we don't need you know all these different versions so now we're starting to see a lot of duplicates populate in ab cop as i mentioned before big fan of that but we've got a bootleg we got a japanese version we got a world bootleg world version like nobody's gonna play four versions of ab cop um i'm confident in that let's go down here let's see are we gonna find lots of wrestlefest on this one though Let's see, we'll go to, instead of W, we'll go to X and just work our way up. So we've got one, two, three, four WrestleManias, and here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that six or seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, six different versions of WrestleFest. So that's what I was talking about before. We are starting to see that. And how many versions of WWF Superstars? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six as well. So. 
I, I was thinking it was seven before with the uh, Kin Hank drive that I reviewed. I guess it must have been six because we're seeing exactly that over here. So that's unfortunate. Now we're diving into this in depth and we're finding a lot of duplicates here. So that, you know, 60 plus thousand games is probably, um, you know, just grossly um, off from what the reality is. So Game & Watch here, what was that, 53? 53 titles here. These are cool to have. I don't know anybody that actually plays these in all honesty, but they're, they are cool to have on here. I won't knock it. Uh, original Game Boy, 1,545 games. Okay, that's crazy. Just a, a crazy high number there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have lots of duplicates in here as well. I don't even need to go through to, to you know, convey that to you guys. It's just way too high of a number here. We should not have 1,500 games in this collection. So, um, yeah, there's there's multiple releases for, I don't know, it looks like a lot of titles here. All right, we'll back out. Game Boy Advance over here, 1,696 games. Again, same situation. There's just too many titles in here for there not to be some duplicates. Um, doesn't seem to be as many duplicates as previous collection, but still a lot. Game Boy Color. 1,473 games. Should not be anywhere near that many games in here. So again, I have to say, we're gonna have probably Japanese and US versions of a lot of titles, and here you go. European for Aladdin, regular US for Aladdin. Same thing right above that with Air Force Delta, J Japan release, um, USA release. We go down here to All-Star Tennis. We've got, all right, that one we've only got one, but um, here's one. Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare, two versions of that. Yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of duplicates. Game Gear over here from Sega, 497 games. And we have the same deal here. Look at Alien, uh, Alien 3, Aladdin, Alien Syndrome. Just a lot of duplicates here. So we're, it was starting off pretty steady there and it was going well, but now we're definitely seeing a lot of duplicates throughout. So Nintendo GameCube, we've got, what, what was that, 12 games? Yeah, 12 games here. Um, all right, so we got, I mean, we've got Luigi's Mansion, we've got uh, Fire Emblem's a good one, Mario Golf, Mario Kart Double Dash, Paper Mario, Pikmin 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Strikers, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Smash Bros. Melee, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. I mean, they've got a great selection of GameCube games. I'm not even going to deny that. Um, I can, just like Dreamcast, make a lot of recommendations to add more. But it's a good starting point here. And, it, you know, they definitely got, um, you know, a lot of the more popular titles. So definitely a solid GameCube collection, even though it's only got 12 total games on it. Uh, we'll go over here to Sega Genesis, 1,680 games, and I'm sure, like everything else so far, yeah, look at Real Monsters down here. One, two, three different versions there. Uh, we've got the beta version, which is cool, but, I mean, do we need all of that? No. Afterburner 2, great game. We don't need two versions, though. At least I don't. I mean, if you're collecting different versions, then that's different, but Aladdin, four versions, and, I mean, we've seen a whole hell of a lot of Aladdin titles so far from each of the collections, so I would imagine there's just a ton of the same game, um, you know, just different versions of it. All right, so IGS over here, we've got 32 titles over here, and there's even duplicates in smaller collections like that. Um, 32 over here. Atari Lynx over here with 76. And I'm not seeing the duplicates on this one, which is nice, but... All right. MAME. Now, 1,882 games. All right, so there's going to be a lot of crossover between this collection and FB Neo. And then they also had Arcade with thousands and thousands of games as well. So, look, another AV Cop. We already highlighted, I don't know how many in the last collection, and it was even in the collection before that as well. So this one's not littered with tons and tons of duplicates from what I can gather. We got another Aladdin just in case we need one more. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is pretty straightforward here. Really a clean collection so far. Let's go in. We have WrestleFest for this one. Yeah, we just have one. So like this, this is the way it should be, in my opinion. One Superstars, one WrestleFest, one WrestleMania. Um, 
X-Men. Okay, so we have like the two players, four player and six player. I'm okay with that. This is how it should be. So they got it right over here, but the last one was just ridiculous amount of duplicates. Um, and that was already a collection that had a lot of crossover between the first arcade collection. Lots of arcade games here. So, all right, Sega, or not just lots of arcade games, but lots of arcade games and collections. All right, so Sega Master System, 659 games. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing duplicates all over here as well. Oh, okay. In television, 155 games. All right, we have Sega Mega CD, 50 games. Good game here, Demolition Man. I heard they're doing the sequel to that movie now as well. So fun fact for you guys. Um, Earthworm Jim Special Edition is good. Jurassic Park down here. All right, we'll keep moving. We've got Mega Drive, 500 games. Some more Aladdin. Whoever put this together must love Aladdin because every single collection has at least one, if not 20, Aladdin games. Um, all right, so here we have Mega Drive. So we have two Mega Drives here. Um, yeah, I mean, different, different, but still a lot of the same. Uh, and this one had 2,694 games. Okay. And uh, yeah. Duplicates, duplicates, duplicates. All right. Sega M2, 50 games. That is way too many damn games for Sega Model 2. Um, so we got different revisions here. Yeah, I mean, there's multiples of almost every game. Rail Chase 2 only has one version, but a lot of these have multiple versions. But... Um, Hey, I mean, top skaters in here. That's pretty cool. I mean, there's three top skaters in here, and that's one that you don't see included on a lot of these plug-and-play drives. Um, yeah, I mean, there's good titles in here. Don't get me wrong, and I'm not trying to knock this just because it's got tons of duplicates. There are still a lot of really good games in here, like Gunblade New York is a good one. Um, House of the Dead, I mean, come on. Talk about a classic game. Indianapolis uh, 500 is a good one. All right, so Model 3, 58 games. Like, that's just ridiculously padded. There should not be 58 of these. And look at how many Dirt Devils. We've got one, two, three, four. Emergency Call Ambulance, not one of the most popular by any means. And that doesn't look great by the uh, video preview up there for Dirt Devils. Uh, one, two, three, four, five different Emergency Call Ambulance games. Two Harley Davidson and uh, LA Riders games. Scud Race has several. Star Wars Trilogy Arcade has what, three? One, two, three. Yep. Lost World has two. Um, Virtual Fighter 3 has 17. No. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, these are different years. Well, some of them are. Some of them aren't. Yeah, I mean, just. All right, we're getting way too padded out here. MSX, 885 games. Look at, I mean, 3D golf simulation, three different versions. Not even gonna bother going down there. 137 for MSX2. Right off the bat, duplicates. Um, all right, so over here, just one game in this, Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, Sega Naomi, 67 games. Too many again. We'll go the opposite way because I like to see Royal Rumble. It's only one of that game. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there are some duplicates in here. All right, we'll back out. Second Naomi 2. All right, pretty good. Turbo Graphics 1693 games. Pretty straightforward over here. We have Turbo Graphics CD. Right, Neo Geo, 202 games. <sighs> Neo Geo, 
Neo Geo CD system. And that one had 94 games, so Neo Geo Pocket, 276 games. That's a lot. Yeah, there's duplicates all over. There's just way too many of those. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color, 118. Same deal, too many games in here. There's gotta be tons of duplicates and I'm seeing them already. Um, Nintendo 3DS, five games. Just five for 3DS, that sucks. Um, but, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, N64, 155 games. And I imagine this doesn't have duplicates because, um, well, yeah, no, I'm not seeing. Looks good. And we're gonna definitely check out performance on a lot of these more demanding games. Like I wanna check out N64, GameCube, um, and we'll jump into a handful of collections and titles within those collections, 552 DS games. And um, I would imagine there's probably not a ton of duplicates here. I spoke too soon. There are some duplicates even in here. Not as many as the other collections though by any means, but all right, so for those that want to emulate Nintendo DS, there's lots to choose from here. NES, 1,578 games. So there's some homebrews in here. And there are duplicates as well. All right, so now we have a collection of just NES hacks, 2084 to be exact. And I mean, there's duplicates in here too unless they're just different hack versions of these. I mean, I'm not, not that familiar with hacks in all honesty with this collection, but yeah, I mean, I'm seeing, look at this, one, two, three, four of that particular one alone. And they could be slightly different with homebrew or hacks rather, but I don't know. Uh, 285 for family computer disk system. All right, and then we have Super Famicom with, holy crap, 14,246 games for Super Famicom. All right, that's ridiculous. I mean, we have a full page of just four games, right? One, two, three, yeah, just four games here, but we have literally our entire screen is these titles. Just goes to show you, there's just too much of the same stuff on here. Um, all right, Odyssey 2, 116 games, pretty straightforward over here. We have Open Boar, 121 games, and I imagine there's not duplicates in this one. All right, next collection is PC Engine with 410 games. And we do have, again, duplicates here, Japanese, USA. We have CD-ROM, and some people aren't gonna be bothered by that. But to me, it just feels like we don't need a Japanese version of the same title that's in English or that's in a European release. It's just too much for me. PC Engine CD, two games here. We have PlayStation, the original PlayStation, 201 games. And um, at first glance, it looks like we don't have tons of duplicates, which is a good thing. Next one over is PS2. This is 32 games, and I am not seeing any duplicates here. We've got some good stuff, it looks like, too. Bully's a good one, Burnout 3 is a good one, Devil May Cry, we've got Final Fantasy, God of War, Grand Theft Auto. We've got some Jack in here, Kingdom Hearts. We've got Metal Gear Solid, Prince of Persia, Resident Evil, Shadow Hearts, Silent Hill, Tekken, Twisted Metal. Definitely some good franchise uh, titles in here for PS2. Back and out. Next one over is PS3. Now this is pretty impressive. I have to think if they added this, it works. However, looking at the specs here, there's no reason why, um, or there's no clear indication that any PS3 should work on here. So I'll be definitely diving into this. This is Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Backing out, we have PSP minis. Next one over is PSP. So I like the fact that they have differentiated the, um, these two collections here. So 243 for minis. To see how they are laid out in here and a lot of times we'll just see a PSP collection that is almost entirely PSP minis so it's nice that they did the uh, you know the separating of those we have 33 P 
regular PSP games. Looks pretty straightforward here. Good selection of titles. We got some Need for Speed in here. Some Tekken in here. Some WWE SmackDown versus Raw. All right, good stuff. Pokemon Mini, 43 games over here. We've got some ports. You can see the ports there. 2048, Craft, and Mr. Boom. Over here, we've got 15 games over here. Keeping it moving, we have Sega Saturn, 21 Saturn games. And I'm not seeing any duplicates here. Decent selection of titles, I suppose. I'm not really a big Saturn guy myself, but I do recognize a handful of these. Keeping it moving, we have Sega Mega Drive 32X. 32X has 52 titles. We do have some duplicates in here. Love Tournament Edition for NBA Jam. Uh, we have Genesis Hacks, 68 of those. We have Sega uh, SG-1000, 191 games. Definitely see duplicates on here as well. And there's no shortage of duplicates. Backing out, we have Sharp 68,000, uh, 349 games over here. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Super Nintendo, 3,700 games. Way too many Super Nintendo games. And there's already crossover with a lot of these titles to other previous collections we've jumped into. So, yeah, um, not a clean setup on this particular one. Super Graphics over here with 319 games. Duplicates in here as well. All right, so we've got Nintendo Switch. One Switch game, uh, ARMS, which I'm not familiar with, but hey, it is uh, a Switch title, I guess, so it's good. Try that out as well. 71 games over here. And these are games that we already have come across multiple times in other collections. Vectrex with 68 games. Pretty straightforward. Virtual Boy, and how many Virtual Boy? 31. All right, and there are some duplicates here, but for the most part, pretty straightforward. Supervision with 47 games. Next we have Nintendo Wii. We've got Donkey Kong Country Returns, Mario Kart Wii, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. All right. Three good titles. I wish there was more, but three's, three of the best is, is still good. Wii U, we just have Mario Kart 8. Definitely have to see if that works on here. Now, Windows, we have uh, Maldita Castilla. Wonder Swan, we have 110 games from Wonder Swan. And there are. Let's see, definitely, obviously you're going to find a lot of Japanese titles here. Uh, Wonder Swan Color, we have 91 games. Sinclair ZX Spectrum, 2,098 games. And uh, then here we are, back to our all games list. So that is the complete tour of what this has to offer. But let's dive into some games to test out the performance. We're going to jump into the more higher end stuff just to see you know, where everything lines up over there because the older stuff like Atari and Classic Arcade and all that good stuff, NES, Super Nintendo, etc. All that's going to work very well on here. I know that for a fact. Let's dive into the more demanding stuff. This victory, you win! Felicita, you don't know.
All right, guys, we just jumped into the KinHank Mini plug and play game console mini PC. Now, let's talk about the fact that this is advertised as a plug and play game console mini PC that has over 60,000 games on here. So, first and foremost, it is 100% plug and play. You boot up into this, you can easily access Retrobat right from your desktop on your PC. You double click on it, you get right into all your games. Everything is pre configured, pre mapped. You don't have to even map the controller, you don't even have to add drivers, everything is done for you. So you can dive straight into your games. But what I think is a little bit strange about this is this is kind of deceiving in that I think a lot of people are going to look at this as, you know, one of those plug and play consoles where you hit the button, you dive right into your game menu and you select your games. And it's somewhat like that, but everything goes through Windows. So you're essentially buying a new mini PC that's already been set up in Windows by somebody else that you don't know. So it just feels a little sketchy in all honesty. So I went through and I did a full test on here to verify that there's no viruses or malware. And I want to speak to this because I recently reviewed the Kinhank 12 terabyte game drive. I did the exact same thing over there. I scanned it on three different scanners because I want to be thorough. I detected absolutely no malware or viruses at all. And, um, you know, I didn't mention it in that video because I didn't have anything to talk about. I mean, there was no experience to relay back to anybody. I didn't have anything detected. So a few people did comment in that they did find malware or viruses on their version of the drive. So I want to say this, if you're getting a PC that's already been set up by somebody else, or you're getting yourself a game drive or anything that you're connecting to your PC that you can scan, scan it because there's always risk involved here. Anybody can put a virus on there or malware. Um, so you're always going to absorb some risk in that process. So be sure to do a virus scan and malware scan to verify that there's nothing sketchy going on, you know, on your drive or your PC or whatever it is that you have purchased that was set up by somebody else because you never know. So just because I didn't experience anything and I didn't hear today either doesn't mean that you won't. So just always be safe. Be careful, be thorough, and scan anything that you buy, you know, that's been set up by somebody else. So nothing was detected for malware or viruses. However, I did detect tracking cookies on here. Now, are tracking cookies viruses or malware? No, um, but they are sketchy. They do, um, you know, potentially lead to privacy concerns and stuff like that. So when you have a scanner like uh, Total AV, for example, you scan it and you can easily have it removed with just one click. So I recommend doing that. Or if you plan to never connect this to Wi-Fi, which I don't think is, you know, what most people would be doing. I think the first thing that most people do is connect over to their Wi-Fi network. If you plan to use it completely offline, then that's not really something you need to be overly concerned with. But I think that the best thing to do is obviously scan your system remove anything that you don't want on there, and you can dive straight into your games. Now, let's talk about the 60,000 plus games that are advertised here. Yes, there's over 60,000 files for games on here. However, there's tons and tons and tons of duplicates. So I believe that the true number would be about a quarter of what is advertised here, which is significantly less. And we saw that by jumping into some collections that had um, like six duplicates of the majority of the games. And in some cases, we saw screens that were just four games, but there's like 20 showing up on our screen. So definitely loaded with duplicates, and that just pads and inflates the numbers falsely, in my opinion. So 
Um, unfortunately, we're seeing this more and more with these plug and play setups like this. So I'm not you know, surprised anymore when I see tons and tons of duplicates across a wide range of collections. It's frustrating. Um, it doesn't make for a really clean and tidy setup, but at the end of the day, it, it kind of is what it is. As long as you know from watching a video like this what the true count is, you can evaluate whether this is worth it for you to get or not. But let's talk about performance here because the performance here, in all honesty, um, you know, looking at it as an average across a wide range of collections of games, it's not that great. And we looked at the specs and they're decent for the early stuff, but you're definitely going to be pushing your limits here for this setup and the specs when diving into the more demanding stuff. So I did a full test on a bunch of the more demanding collections here. Um, so we have Dreamcast. Dreamcast was perfect for the most part. N64, very good. I won't say perfect, but it's pretty close. Uh, PS2 and GameCube, both were a comparable experience. The games run, they run pretty well, but you do have random glitches and lags that just kind of pop out out of nowhere. So it's frustrating in that you'll be smooth sailing, enjoying your game, and then all of a sudden it'll just kind of glitch out on you for a brief period of time. We're talking like a second or two, and then you're right back to normal. But this pops up at random multiple times, you know, I would say probably every 45 seconds or so, you'll have a little slight glitch. Uh, it's enough to frustrate you in all honesty. It's enough to you know just kind of not completely ruin the experience but definitely downgrades downgrades the experience considerably uh there's also ps3 on here which in my opinion there's they have no business putting ps3 on here the specs do not indicate that you would effectively ever emulate a ps3 title however they found one title that plays but it doesn't play well it's very laggy very slow feels very awkward and it's just not enjoyable so i wouldn't even play it in all honesty the way that it is um, you know, there's not screen tearing, but it's just shy of that in all honesty. So PS3, not great on here. Now PS, um, or excuse me, PS3. So PS3, just avoid it on here. Now we also have PSP on here and PSP can be one of those funny emulators where it's, you have to kind of adjust the settings to better your experience. And that is the case here, but they didn't bother adjusting those settings for you, even though this is plug and play and they went in here and they configured everything. They even mapped the controller for you, um, but they didn't do that, which is again, very strange. So you saw what the experience is like with PSP right out of the gate. It's a laggy, I mean, laggy is an understatement. It's just to a crawl just slow motion. Um, so you have to adjust your frame rate in order to get a decent experience out of this. I don't want to have to go through all these games when I'm, you know, going into this experience because it's plug and play. I don't want to go into all these titles and manually adjust things to make the experience better. That's what we're paying a premium price point for, for, you know, that all to be done. So I thought that was kind of awkward. Um, now, I also have Switch here. Now, Switch actually does run pretty well for the one title that's included, but here's the downside with that. The controls are mapped all wrong. So you saw as far as I can get in the game because the buttons aren't mapped on here. Um, the only thing that works are the shoulder and trigger buttons. And that's it. None of the you know uh, A, B, X, and Y buttons work. So you can get around this by going into the emulator and mapping your controller yourself, but when they've mapped it for everything else, it's kind of a no brainer to map it for, you know, something like Switch too. So they didn't bother. You can't get into the game. You can't play the game the way that it is. You can get around that, of course, by going into the emulator, like I said, making those adjustments and mapping it yourself, but it's more legwork that we're paying that premium pr price to have done for us. So. That kind of sucked. Uh, Wii U, I could not capture for some reason. Every time I tried to record that, uh, it just recorded a blank screen. So I couldn't show you the experience there, but it's very much aligned with GameCube and PS2, where it plays pretty well for the most part, the majority of the time, but you do get a random glitch or uh, lag that just kind of jumps in at random. So um, all in all, the experience here was not great. The price point here is way too high for what you get and the quality that you get and the fact that it just feels kind of sketchy. So I think that for the price point, if you set up your own drive or you even bought a pre-configured drive and you just brought it into you know, a mini PC of your choosing, you could be right at the same price point as this. Yes, you'd have to do some of the legwork, but you still have to do some of the legwork here 
even with the fact that they're advertising it as plug and play. You can also get a much tidier setup if you put the time in to build your own setup or alter somebody else's that you can get for a fraction of the price that what you're what you'd be paying for the entire package together here. Controllers though, honestly, were probably the best experience out of this, which surprised me. They didn't seem that great. Like the analog sticks just don't seem that great, but they actually were. They were actually were pretty smooth. Buttons are pretty responsive. D-pads good. Uh, shoulder and trigger buttons. The trigger buttons just feel kind of, I don't know, kind of cheap, but I honestly didn't play a lot of games that use them. So, you know, that could be why the experience was, was pretty good too, but the battery seems to hold the charge for a long period of time. They're good uh, quality controllers, but unfortunately everything else kind of falls flat here. So let me know in the comments what you guys think and what you thought of the plug and play sort of setup here and the fact that it's already set up for you on a mini PC. I don't know. It just feels awkward. It wasn't a great experience. The performance just didn't seem adequate for the types of games that they're, that they're trying to bundle and, you know, sell you on. So yeah, it just kind of fell flat for me, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You guys know the deal though. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you enjoy the content today. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.